How you doing everybody? Randy Richard in the shop. And in this video, we're gonna to try to get a few things done and put together actually on the cement mixer. All right, the tongue's in. We're gonna put the uh, locking attachment on here. And uh, hopefully get this all aligned. That should work. And there's the hole, so we can just slip it up and drop it in. Well, that's one thing. Let's see if this is gonna go in there, right? There we go. Perfect. Where the tongue comes through, we have a stop bolt that goes on here. Now we're just gonna finger tighten that now. That's all it needs, it's a nylock nut. And we might even make a, a special pin for that, I think. I'm gonna put some joint sealant around here so cement doesn't build up in there like it did before. I don't put it up there, but just kind of get it kind of close. Don't get it close enough it stays up. It has to be up on the back. Okay, there. Okay, this is it. Get yours on the back. Get that to sit on the top. There you go. Like that. I can get it from here. Is that nice on this side? The six bolts. I love the green and red. It's kind of a Christmas theme. Nice. Stainless stack. I had to fill something with that hole. Why not put a smoke stack on it? And that stack look great. All right, we need to put the bearings in the outer race, the cone, or it's called the cone. And this is kind of a different bearing. See how it has a shoulder here, right? That sticks up. And the other bearing, you know, doesn't have that. This is a more of a typical uh, tapered roller bearing. This this side is the inboard side of the hub and it has that shoulder because a seal is going to go in over this uh, to keep you know water and stuff and dirt and all that good stuff out right it's just a lip seal 
but that will be going over this in here and these hubs are made with notches here and over here uh, on on each side and that is to knock that inner race out you reach in from one direction and and knock it out uh, so they should fit tight and and uh, nice and snug and not spin at all and uh, just just going around and and tapping them down in there I'm not hitting hard or anything really so they're going in but, but nice and snug and that's how they should go and then I'm using a brass drift to uh, go the rest away I'm going to uh, hand pack these and then We'll drop that in and then we'll put the seal on. So this is the technique I like to use. Uh, glob of grease on the old hand there. Now I'm using the uh, marine uh, blue grease. Uh, works great for wheel bearings. If any water gets in it, it will really repel and keep that water out. And uh, I just, just do a little bit and force it up into the bearing. Just catch it on the edge there and you're just pushing it up into the bearing. This works really well. There we go, and then uh, we'll just drop it in. Kind of gets pushed started a little bit, and just tap it right in. There we go, and then we'll do the other side. And it's the same, uh, same kind of deal. Now I've already cleaned all these uh, parts, so. Makes it a little quicker. Same same method. All right, now it's ready to go on. Washer and nut will out here, be out here, and to hold this on. All cleaned up. Uh, that's ready to go. I'm just going to uh, slip that right on there. Okay. That's the whole idea. There we go. That yeah, kind of pops out. There we go. Yeah, a nice big washer that goes on there. And a nut. Now, I'm going to work that, try to work some of that grease that's in there, out of the bearings actually. I got that as tight as I can get it basically, by hand. Usually you don't have to tighten it too much here by wrench. If you, usually you can just do it by hand. That kind of seats those bearings good. And then find your cotter pinhole. And I usually back off one space. It's usually enough. Of course, it's kind of cool out here, so it's a little sticky, but it spins very free. And usually you feel just a tiny, tiny bit of motion in there. And that allows for heating up of everything. Then have the long leg on top. Pull it up and over. And flat. Now, if this leg is too long, clip a little off. Like this, this one is a little bit too long. And we'll just clip a quarter or so inch off. And then pound that down. 
And then you notice how I pounded that in tight. And that's how you should do it. Oh, that feels perfect. Okay, it's ready for wheels. Now there's no hubcap. The wheel is the hubcap. Let's put the tires on. Now, now these are still the old tires uh, and they're really bad shape. But they're holding there and I'll get them replaced sometime this winter. Uh, and uh, they're like 16 inch wheels, 16 inch I think they are. So what's unusual about these uh, the wheels is that this, this part here, that inside here, this is the actually hub cover or hub cap that covers the bearing. Uh, so we don't really want this to leak. <laughs> Uh, and I'm going to, I'm going to put some, uh, never sees in here so that doesn't peel the paint. So the paint doesn't stick to this and I'll be able to get it off here, uh, in maybe a month or so. And so I'm going to paint this with never sees around with the contact area there. So it doesn't stick on there. And then I'll, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a gasket and have a gasket in there uh, when I put them on after new, new tires are on. This way the paint won't stick to the, to the hub and I'll be able to get it off easy, you know, without peeling the paint off of the wheel. I'm using a floor jack to pick this up with. Doesn't that look good? Nothing like a little bling for the cement mixer. What a fine looking machine, huh? Really coming along. Next step I, next thing I'm kind of ready to do is put the motor mount in to work on the jack shaft part, but get the motor mounts in and the motor in place. We'll be uh, getting the drum and the yoke. Uh, I'll be getting to those. Those are big jobs and still figuring out what I'm going to do about them. 